In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It has been a little while since I had the happiness of being at St. Albans. And I have heard wonderful things were happening here. I hear them. This music is superb and the flags to every sign of good Christian life producing light in a very dark world, and so I, I rejoice, I rejoice to be with you today at the beginning of Advent. Thank you for the privilege of coming. There is one thing I should mention to just uh, to explain in the, something that's going to happen in the last part of the service. Uh, this is the Feast of St. Andrew. St. Andrew's Day is very important because Advent always the The Feast of St. Andrew's is today and it's important because Advent always begins immediately after the Feast of St. Andrew's. And today, since the Feast is on Sunday, it starts today. And that is, that's why later on, after the prayers of the people, the collect will be the collect for St. Andrew's Day. Uh, is there anybody here named Andrew? Mm -hmm. Is there? No? Is there an Andrew? It was, next time there will be an Andrew. <laughs> My son is named. Unless you were on the lookout for it, you could miss the fact that we are celebrating New Year's Day today, the beginning of Advent, the first season in the church's year. So, on top of everything else, Happy New Year to everybody. This is the season of Christ's birth when a new story began in the history of God's people. In fact, the Gospel lesson for today has just the right message for New Year's Day, just the right message for people who are used to working all day and staying up half the night. And you can't miss the word of the day. Can't miss the word for today in today's gospel. It comes three times in the last four verses, and it is keep awake. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes open and sharp. Beware, keep alert, keep awake, keep awake. And in fact, we have heard the same message. For the last three Sundays, we heard it three Sundays ago in Jesus' story about the wise and foolish virgins. You remember that story? How they were, there was a big wedding party, and they had uh, some young women there to help celebrate who were get, bearing uh, lights. There are no electric lights in those days, just candles and oil lamps. These people had oil lamps. It was very important for them to be, be there because otherwise you could see what was going on in the dark. Five of these young women, uh, the wise ones, laid in some extra oil. They said, well, we've been to wedding parties before. We know the bridegroom sometimes doesn't come on time. He comes late. We better put in some extra oil, just in case. The, the others, the other five, the foolish ones said, oh no, 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 it'll be okay. And uh, when the time came, the foolish ones had burned through their oil before the bridegroom came. And they said to the wise ones, lend us some oil. And they said, no, we can't do that. We can't leave where we're, where we're waiting for bridegroom. We don't have any to spare. 
you must go and buy some. Buy some for yourself. So they went away. The foolish ones went away, and when they came back, they found the bridegroom, sure enough, had come. And the, do the doors were shut. No party for them. No party for them. Basically the same story we just heard in today's lesson. Lastly, the same message came. Keep waiting. The last message came last week. We heard the story about Judgment Day, how the judge came, and he called up all the people of the earth and he said to some You did me good on earth, and I will do you good now. Come into my kingdom. And to the others, he said, you have no time for me on earth. I don't have any place for you in my kingdom. Sorry. Same thing. And the people who, uh, who were, were uh, the, the sheep and were saved said, well, when were we nice to you? When did we do any good to you? When did we see you hungry and give you something to eat or thirsty and give you something to drink? When were you a stranger and we sheltered you? When were you in prison or sick? And we did, when did we do all that? We never saw you before. And he said, well, you did it to people who didn't have anything. You did it to the least of these. And when you did it to the least, these low down, forgotten, invisible, trampled upon people, then you did it to me. Thank you. And the other said, well, when, when were we not, when were we not, when well, we never had the pleasure of meeting before, but when, when did we see you and did you fail, I failed to said, well, did you not see anybody who was hungry, anybody who was lost, a stranger, anybody who was not thirsty, did you not see the or did you not have people in prison or sick, and you didn't. And you didn't help them? Do you remember that? When you did not help them, you did not help me. You shut them out of your world, and I have no room for you. So these goats have held back what they had. Pity was all they spared for the down and out. And they had given him, the judge, absolutely zero. And he gave them one-way tickets downstairs. So the gospel message for all these weeks, for today and for the new year we're now starting is stay awake, keep your eyes open, keep your eyes sharp, this is a good message for people who work hard, sometimes three jobs, have sleep apnea, and now and then feel themselves going to sleep at the museum. My wife Anne and I hardly ever go to New York City. We are simple country folk. But last week we stirred up our courage enough to make an excursion into that fabulous, hurrying, We wanted to see some friends we have known for about 60 years and have missed seeing and wanted to talk with them again. Like us, they cannot see or hear or get around now quite as well as they used to. They have one child, a son. He is now crossing this boy I used to carry in my arms. He is now crossing the bar barrier of seniorhood himself. 
He's getting over 60. He's a friend too, but he is needful. And his parents still care for him. This fall has been a beautiful, sunny, generally warm time, but the day we went to New York, the rains came all day like a flood and cold moved in. It was a Monday. Some of you who were caught in the rain will remember that one. So we went in, we met our friends, we shared a good lunch, we shared the heartwarming talk that old friends have. And after a few hours, which seemed not much time, we had to catch a taxi back to the bus station. Our friend's son rode a little distance with us to get his subway stop. It was through the rain. This. The taxi driver was a young man from Africa, and we fell into a little conversation, mainly jokes. I noticed that he was taking special care to be sure where our friend wanted to get out. The driver was moving at a good speed through the usual hurly-burly or daredevil traffic in failing daylight, but he had realized that our friend was challenged and he probably could get lost off familiar ground, so the driver was trying to set him down where he knew We drove on after our friend got out and somehow fell to joking about our ages. The driver was young. We must have seemed old to him. Even some years ago when I visited a village in Tanzania, I was by far the oldest person there. The driver said, you just don't know how much time or a little time you have. His grandfather, his mother's father, had lived till he was 91. But the driver's mother, the old man's daughter, didn't make 51. The driver's father barely lived to 57. I'm a Muslim, the driver said. People talk and I tell them, nobody knows how long they have. You don't know whether you have 50 or 57 years or whatever. Allah knows and Allah isn't talking. We had gotten to the bus station just then. And my wife uh, is, is quite lame, and she is lame enough so that some of you will, will have seen people in this condition. She's lame enough so that she has to lie, almost lie down on the back seat with her feet towards the door to get out. And uh, it means taking time, and it's very awkward and wiggling and all that sort of thing. But that's the way. Uh, that's the way it is. She's very lame. So we got to the bus station and uh, the driver <coughs> just uh, told me this wisdom about uh, Allah and how long we have on earth. And uh, the driver had offered to help Anne. But she likes to do what needs doing her own way and for herself. So I had to keep the conversation going. The driver, I took the, up the line, the driver had cut, cast out for me like a tr trout running for a bait. And uh, he had said, you don't know how long you have, Allah does know that he isn't talking. So I chimed in that other religious people said something along the same lines. They said, <coughs> those who talk don't know. Those who know don't talk. <laughs> And he threw his head back laughing. I've never seen, it's a long time since I've seen anybody laugh that well. So it's worth it. We settled an affair with the driver and another joke or two, and I followed Dan through the door, the car door, and he said, Allah bless you. Allah bless you. And I gave him a blessing in return for his family and himself. So there we faced the uh, Port Authority bus terminal. We had a general idea of where we wanted to catch our bus, but this Port Authority building is a gigantic complex of wings and passageways and who knows what else. We knew one little path through it <coughs> quite well, but to us the rest of the 
place is a spaghetti junction of twists and turns and one of the biggest anthills in the world. <laughs> we were still hesitating about where to go and what to do when we got there when the elevator door opened in front of us. Where are you going? came a man's voice from inside this box. We told him, he said, come on in, I'll tell you how to get there. So in we went and he did tell us, as clearly as only an expert can do. He was an older man, but still younger than we were. We all got out together, Anne and I and the man, and he told us the route again just to be sure we had it, and we went our separate ways. The first thing we had to do was go downstairs before we went upstairs again, and Anne had rather used the stairs than the escalator. She's afraid of the escalator. And I went ahead on the escalator to scout out the next move, what's the next step going to be. And in my usual feckless way, uh, I was uh, looking around back and forth. And lo and behold, the same man who had helped us in the elevator came up. He had come down a flight, a different way, and he came up and he said, I see your wife is coming down the stairs. I said, we must take good care of our ladies. And I said, yes, that's right. So he waited, and like a good shepherd, he took us back to stretch, we didn't know, to where we could find our bus. And he didn't wait around. He was still moving when we found My mother told me more than once, don't talk to strangers. And, uh, wake up, keep your eyes sharp. It was good advice. She spotlighted some essential survival tactics. But the gospel takes, the gospel is a very worrying thing to read. And the gospel takes a different point of view. The gospel tells us strangers are not too bad. The Gospel tells us how when Jesus healed the lepers, the only one who turned around and thanked him was a stranger, a foreigner, a one out of ten. In last week's Gospel, Jesus took into his kingdom those who in this life had taken him in as a stranger. Lord, they said, when did we see you as a stranger and welcome you? Without knowing it, they had sheltered the Lord when they took the least of these and gave them roofs over their heads and places to sleep. Wake up! Stay alert! Today's readings put a couple of twists on this advice that need a little faith to take them in. Today's reading from Isaiah adds this complication. You heard it. God is sometimes hard to recognize when you see him. The Almighty is a hidden, and the Almighty has a way of hiding. fall into bad ways because he hides himself from them in other people. But God has a way of hiding himself in plain sight, like an elephant in the room. Everybody sees him. Everybody sees the elephant, but nobody notices. This is what last week's gospel about haves and haves not was all about. <coughs> People help God unseen in the needy. All any of the haves could see were needful people. Some were strangers who were wandering, vulnerable to every sort of danger. Others were hungry or thirsty. Some didn't have clothing and were walking through sub-zero winds like some people in Trenton last week without coats while other people in churches had cast off coats in their pockets. The mystery was not that God let the world be divided between haves and have-nots. 
The mystery was that without seeing God, the people who gave help could recognize the grace of God in the weak and the destitute, recognize the grace of God in the lost and the outcast. Wake up. Keep a sharp eye out. Watch out with our eyes in the back of your head. We could do that out of fear or abundance of caution, but that would be a mistake if it went too far if we never talked to strangers. We have to keep those survival tactics under control. Otherwise, we could miss seeing God or God's grace in the random kindness of strangers who need when we could help. And they could miss seeing the image of God in us when we God plays hide and seek with people who love him. It would be good in Advent and a blessing on the season to catch <coughs> the joy of being with God unexpectedly. In a few jokes with a stranger on a rainy day, or spot the good shepherd's concern in someone else's concern for a challenge and vulnerable stranger trying to get home. There are many ways to enter into God's joy by seeing him where you least expect him and in a way you never thought you would. Amen.